Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today it's time to get yourself to Mars. So, um, and yes, this, this entire episode will be full of total recall references, so you know, just prepare yourself for that reality. So today we're going to talk about doing a little Martian base. Here I've got a little 40 mil base, something that would be suitable for a lot of different sized miniatures, you know, a lot of different miniatures, and we're going to turn it into a little Martian landscape. Obviously you can blow this up or shrink this down depending on the size of your needs. One of the ways I see a lot of people do Martian bases is just sort of they throw some of our traditional uh, sort of Martian iron earth, uh, you know, something like that, all over the thing and just paint it red and call it a day or even leave it the color of this. And I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. We can do better than that. So we're going to talk about how we build a, a Martian base and make it look like it's on Mars. So <clears throat> this this will be a two-parter. The first part is going to be making the base. The second part will be painting the base as per usual with these sorts of things. So we're going to start out by just creating some height differential. In general, I like to have height differential on my bases. Verticality usually makes your base look better. So I'm going to find you know, something that's about the right size here. I'm going to tear my cork to get rid of any kind of flat spaces and give me something that I can place the miniature on. Shorten that just a little. Cool. There we go. That'll be a nice simple place that we can rest the feet of him. Let's actually pull it to one side. Create kind of like a, a level like that. That looks good. Uh, and then let's go ahead and glue that bad boy in place. So because in general, your miniatures are going to look good if they have a difference in height. That is to say, you would take some of these and stack them up with two layers of cork. Some you would do maybe like uh, three layers or whatever. Some you would do none. And then that vertical difference is a good way to break up. Like I'm going to put a little extra rock there. It's a good way to break up the monotony of some of the miniatures. We'll use a little accelerator here to just get that to dry nice and fast. Um, it's a good way to break up the monotony since all of our troops basically tend to be the same height. It's one of the things, they can vary faces and leg positions and arm positions and what weapons, but they're all like exactly six feet tall or, you know, whatever, right? So changing the height of what's on the base can, can add the variability we would expect to see in the real world when we look around in daily life and see that, hey, there are actually lots of different sized people in the world. All right, so the next thing we're going to use is some Vallejo Desert Sand. Um, this sort of texture is still very appropriate for Mars. And that's what's important to understand. Mars isn't just a bunch of cracked earth. It's not all just this constant, unending, dried river basin wasteland, right? Um, Mars has, is, is very much like when they, when they want to film something that looks Mars-ish in the real world, when a movie does it, they always go out and film in one of the deserts in... Uh, usually in the southwest of the United States. So here we're just going to take some of this desert sand and we're going to spread it around. We're going to get some up on top. We're going to notice that I'm trying to remove the hard drop here in the rock. That is to say like this, this drop right here. I don't want that to be as evident because one of the things that will make your bases look the worst is when you look at it and go, oh, cork, huh? Like, if I can tell it's cork without any kind of other looking, that's generally not a great thing. So we take some of this paste, and by the way, this is this is the Vallejo paste. If you don't want to go out and get this, you can make your own out of, you know, lots of different things. But you can go get, um, you know, like some, make a slurry of, of uh, like, you know, spackle and... Um, spackle and grit and stuff like that. And you can, you can make your own slurry pastes. I just happen to like these. I like the formulation on them. I think they dry nice. And I think they look good, so I use them. And you get a lot of it for, you know, in the end, not that much money. So something like that where I've got that kind of different spread of, uh, of textures going on. Okay, so now, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off our brush there of that goopy gross stuff. Uh, don't use a nice brush for this. I hope that would be obvious, but just in case, I'll say it because it's better to be said than unsaid. Now is when we're going to go to uh, a little bit of grit and texture. 
So that's another thing. If you've ever been out in a desert in the southwest of the U.S., you know that there's an awful lot of uh, there's an awful lot of texture around. Little rocks, big rocks, all sorts of different rocks. So we're going to take a little bit of uh, PVA glue here, and we're just going to go ahead and spread some of that there. We'll put a little bit in there. Let's get a little bit back in this area back here, maybe on this side, just a little bit. Okay. Then we'll take a very damp brush, the same one we just used. It's got a lot of water in it, and we'll just kind of spread that around, work it into the goop. The goop will also help hold our texture in place, so we're just kind of making sure that's all mixed in there. Then we're going to take a couple different grits. Here I have some Army Painter Black Battleground. I don't know. Something I found a long time ago that I just really like. The size it has a lot of nice different size rocks. I use it quite a bit. Take a little bit of that and we'll just kind of spread it in there. It looks like I'm putting pepper on it. Then we just pepper the salad. More pepper? More pepper? All right. All right. We'll take, this is a nice big rock mixture. I don't know where I got this from, honestly, anymore. It's, you tend to collect this kind of stuff over time and I'm not sure where I got it from, but we want a couple bigger rocks. So we've got a nice bigger texture. We'll need to push those in a little bit so they get down in that glue. We just want a few of those around, All right? Then we're gonna take some sand. Uh, my personal preference is this old Citadel sand. Um, it was just nice sand. It's basically the same sand you'd get on a, on a beach. It reminds me of like Eastern US sand. I don't know where that, which, I don't know what beach they went and harvested it from, but it's very, 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 very thin. Very, very small grain. And then we just kind of fill in the rest of the space where we've got glue. Okay. All right. But now we've still got to make it Martian because it's not just a desert base. It does need that element of cracked earth. Like, that does matter. And we, we sort of recognize that as a, a visual signifier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the base over like that. And we're going to get some of that, some of this Martian. I happen to be using the Martian iron earth right here. There's a couple different types of this around, or there was. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put that on real heavy right in this area. Now... One of the keys to using this is to use it very, very thick. You want it to get goopy. You want it to be nice and thick. Sorry, I'm not trying to cover it with my hand. I'm just trying to pick it up to where I can manipulate it. You don't want to put this on thin. Okay? So we're going to do something like that, where we have a spot that's like that. Now, the other thing I want to do is take a little bit of this goopy nightmare, and I'm going to put a little bit of it over here, over top of the other paste. Now, what's cool about stacking these pastes together is they dry at different speeds, okay? And so what's going to happen is when the, uh, when the bottom paste is drying, it will start pulling apart the top paste. So you'll get bigger cracks. This is actually a trick I've used multiple times on bases. When you want really, really big cracks out of something like this, you can lay down a layer of like this Vallejo basing paste first and then put your Martian Iron Earth or Iron Crust or Ghrelin or whatever the heck they're all called now because there's a bunch of them now. Um, you can put that on top and what will happen is the lower layer will dry before the top layer because just the drying speeds on these, this one, the lower one's thinner and so on and so forth. And so as this bottom one dries and then the top one is doing it, it'll start pulling it apart like that. And what you'll get is these really big, nice cracks. So there we go. Uh, of course, because this is, I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. We're still talking about uh, the world of Warhammer. So what we've got to do, of course, to finish this bad boy off is we're going to put a little drop of glue, super glue right there and there in the corner under that rock. And we're going to put a little skull right there because, of course, 
It's not Warhammer if there's not a skull on the base. So there we go. We've got a nice little skull there. You can see we've got the different textures. Uh, all of that is set and ready to go. And that's basically going to give you a nice Martian base. One of the things you want to avoid is stuff like plant life. We're not expecting to see any plant life. We know that, you know, that's not a thing that's happening on Mars. So it needs to be devoid of, you know, shrubs and bushes and things like that. But it shouldn't all just be cracked earth. You can play with a lot more stuff. You can play with variation in levels, in textures. And effectively, as long as you get something that feels like <clears throat> desert-y, but still uses a little bit of that, like, cracked earth feel and look to it, what you'll end up with is something that feels very Martian. So in part two, uh, next time we will be painting this bad boy. Now we've got to give it some time to dry. Um, I figure at least two weeks uh, should be enough. No, it doesn't take that long. It'll dry overnight. And uh, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So uh, with that being said, give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. Uh, if you have any questions or future topics you'd like to suggest, feel free to drop those down in the comments. But as always, I appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.